and this uh, concept of uh, uh, prevention it starts working and therefore we have uh, the bigger number of trainings now we have two uh, big trainings and 40,000 not um, uh, servicemen are going to participate that our main threat is our internal tie being tired so we are getting tired and that's up that's absolutely natural hello and welcome to ukraine and flames a special project by ukraine media center and ngo euro atlantic course and i'm your host miroslava yaremkiv history reminds us that some factors like credibility are crucial to the success of countries efforts to prevent undesirable behavior by others but studying the limits of these efforts is equally important for identifying a strategy that works we live in a world where geopolitical stability relies largely on containment. But how can we prove that containment works? In today's episode, we're going to talk about policy of containment versus policy of prevention, the strengths and weaknesses of each approach, their historical context, and their relevance in today's complex world. If you want to learn more about this subject, please continue watching this video and subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss our videos in the future. The West's weak response when red lines are crossed can make aggressors like Russia more self-assured. It's crucial to remember this when thinking about possible conflicts worldwide. To be fair, the U.S. government, NATO's key members, and Western nations know that no potential aggressor should underestimate their actual strengths or their determination to use it. Chairman of the Ukraine Crisis Media Center Board and Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary of Ukraine, Valery Chali, believes that containment and prevention have shaped the course of history and continue to influence global decision making. Let's take a listen. So I feel that there are few two main trends, or we can say two tracks. The first one says that the policy of uh, deterioration will prevail. So how can we see that uh, deterrence um, policy? So not in fact uh, when, when it's uh, announcing the preventive actions, so, so they have the, the, their concept has changed. So, uh, so uh, the policy, the prevention policy, so when they understood what has happened in Ukraine and how fast all these crimes were committed in Ukraine against the civilians, and so now the countries which, uh, uh, which put on the Russian Federation and also the Baltic countries, they want to have more military components in the countries. And, uh, for example, they are asking the military bases, uh, the nuclear weapons, and they want that to prevent uh, the, any further actions from the side of the Russian Federation. And this, uh, and this uh, concept of uh, uh, prevention, it starts working. And therefore, we have the bigger number of trainings. Now we have two uh, big trainings and 40,000 not to... Um, uh, servicemen are going to participate that so therefore the prevention works in this way but when we are talking about the war of the Russian Federation against Ukraine still we have the policy of uh, deterrence so it means that we are responding the situation so we are showing we are trying to show what will be the consequences and as a result uh, and uh, when something will happen we will uh, we will act uh, but um, we will we will do our best not to have the the conflict on our territories, and uh, we can see this case on the territory uh, in the case of uh, Romania. The similar thing we see in the U.S. Constantly, we can say that uh, the U.S. has similar situation. They do not want to have the direct conflict with the Russian Federation. They can do that through NATO or through the European Union, and they support Ukraine. So that is also the prevention. Uh, that is a policy of deter deterrence, so that uh, this policy was quite effective, but but it was resulted if after 
four decades and we do not have four decades to resolve this issue and the second concept is the policy of uh, prevention to undertake the prevention steps uh, to show the enemy that that they are going to prevent something but they want to show their capability now and here and in this concept for example no we can see that uh, we finally have the training so uh, as far as i understand that is sea breeze uh, uh bulgaria to uh, republic of turkey ukraine and uh, the other is uh, close to the nice so maybe there are not going to be bomb uh, the warships uh, but they would put the ships which are going to demine the 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 sea. So NATO has actually everything, and they they are using that. So that is a first signal. That is my personal opinion. But I have seen how people hoped that having the uh, the U.S. Um, jet uh, or the warship uh, uh, in the Black Sea that is that is. Um, something which will that will that can uh, that will not allow the russian federation to achieve but no we can see that the Rus that ukraine is uh, cutting these um, these uh, elephant in pieces but we start with we started with the trunk and the teal but we need uh, also to cut the ears and we will manage that as well but these uh, worship they disappeared right before the full scale invasion. Was it uh, just an accident? No, no, that was uh, not an accident. They just wanted to prevent, kind of prevent the war, but nobody is guaranteed that the war would not happen. So there are two concepts. Of course, they are much broader. We can say about the uh, deterrence as uh, the prevention, or being, uh, or being wise, or you can you can evaluate it in two different ways. So there are two uh, concepts. Um, brief concept. The first one is. Uh, offensive uh, even though it is defensive but uh, but uh, we can say that the means it uses can be more effective and also offensive and defensive Due to the large-scale Russian invasion of Ukraine NATO is reviewing its approach to deterring the alleged aggressor the concept of containment by striking back is changing to another concept containment by preventing a strike the new concept assumes that NATO countries will seek to prevent the occupation of even part of their territory. Poland and the Baltic countries took into account the experience of the war in Ukraine, where in the first weeks of the invasion, significant parts of territories became occupied by Russia, and numerous crimes against the civilian population were committed. Director of the Kyiv Security Forum and former Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs of Ukraine, Danilo Lubkivsky, will talk about the response of the alliance to the current events in Ukraine and the challenges that may lie ahead. I think that uh, the the response of alliance uh, to the events in Romania, as far as I remember, or the general... Uh, uh, Secretary General or uh, NATO or someone from the uh, from the Secretariat that NATO does not uh, consider and cannot see any kind of intention from the Russian Federation to to show aggression against uh, the Alliance uh, state. Uh, the General Secretary General said that they do not see the motives uh, of the attack of the Russian Federation. Yes, and in this phrase, in my opinion, you can see the the controversivity of this situation, which we have in the framework of aliens, and of course it affects uh, the uh, the position of Secretary General on how he considers these actions of the Russian Federation. Of course we have the general concept on how we uh, evaluate it. Uh, first of all, we have uh, the general concept on how we support Ukraine, on how we uh, react to the, the provocations of the Russian Federation, but still we have lots of situative um, uh, Situa situations when this uh, position of the um, of the of NATO becomes controversial, or uh, or it or when uh, they have to to show to express uh, thoughtfulness, uh, the thing which does not allow us to make the solid uh, 
decisions and we have to to talk about it so in fact we are the witnesses of two big uh, historical facts the first one is that there is there was there has never been in the history of ukraine how when the alliance has supported ukraine that much all the western countries are united and that's not only the words but that are the actions that are the money and that are that is the money and that is that are the resources in fact we are the part of the of the western uh, society and uh, that is already a fact without the support of course we do understand that our that we would have faced more bloodshed and, and we do understand that maybe there would have been uh, different forms of these aggression. So we are the witnesses of the unprecedented fact uh, of the support of the West uh, against uh, the barbaric attack of the Russian Federation. I think that we have a few challenges. The first challenge is, of course, and here, I think that we have to we have to start discussing not external. A situation about internal. I think that our main threat is our internal tie being tired. So we are getting tired, and that's so, that's absolutely natural. But uh, nevertheless, this threat is not becoming less dangerous. So we are tired of this cursed war, and this is a very good background. For, for fights, for separation in the society, and for someone to be able to create some parallel reality to, to divide Ukrainian society. And that is what I would say... Uh, has an impact on the internal mobilization of the society. And I think that we need to preserve it. I think we need to preserve the national unity. And we need to do everything uh, for the society to be sure uh, that uh, the society is sure that the governance is acting well. Because if uh, the government is not showing the good example, the example of uh, the real unity, not uh, the faked one, but the real one, but because the government is the flagman of the defense and the creation of the, um, of the environment for the protection. Therefore, that's a very serious, that is a very big problem. The problem which the government I mean, the government, uh, both government and Ukrainian political, have to be serious about because tire, being tired is very dangerous. It creates uh, the grounds for the separation in the society and also concerns. And these concerns will lead to, to the conflicts with our Western partners. That is what the Russian Federation wants. And therefore, these long-term, in this case, long-term a strategic um, thinking is a basic is, the, is a basis for the next uh, steps. Uh, the second aspect is that we are going to be told that the West is tired of supporting Ukraine. They are going to do that because that matches our internal depression, which we are feeling. You've been watching a special project by Ukraine Media Center and your Atlantic course dedicated to the Russian-Ukrainian war, Ukraine in Flames. In the description under this video, you can find information on how you can help Ukraine fight Russian aggression. If you find our work useful, please like and share this video. Slava Ukraini!